is an amazing song. I love that song. The first time I heard it was the first service this morning, and I just I dwell on the fact that Christ wants us. He, he wants us to know about his sufficient love, his, his grace, his mercy, his power that he has in our lives that he uh, wants to share with us. Well, this morning, if you will, turn with me to Romans chapter 12. Um, I think it would be best if we prayed before uh, I begin. So, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this day that we can come and worship you, give you thanks, and just bless you and bless each other. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll reveal your will in your, your word and your message to us this morning, Lord, that you'll guide us throughout this week, Lord, and that uh, we'll, make a, we'll make a decision today to live a godly life, to glorify you in everything we do and say, and that we will reach this lost and dying world, Lord, for your glory and honor. And I pray all this in your name. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. One thing that I really, really enjoy about this uh, verse, uh, verse 1, is that Paul is urging us. He's not just saying. He's not just giving a suggestion. He is urging us. Uh, I told the service this morning, I could picture Paul sitting there writing <coughs> on, on a scroll and just sweating. And, you, know, you could feel the emotion in the text. And we need, to, we need to give our lives and present ourselves as holy sacrifices. Um, we, we tend to make re resolutions, and sometimes we don't follow through with them. And I want to encourage you to make a, this resolution to live a godly life. Carry it out as best as you possibly can. We, we can't do it on our own. This is why we need to be in consistent prayer. This is why we need to meditate on the Word. This is why we need to just give our all to God. And Paul commands us to present our bodies. That doesn't mean we need to just sit around and do whatever, you know, be slackers. We need to do something. We need to give our all to God. And... If we read over in chapter 6, you don't have to turn there, but I'll read it for you. Read in chapter 6, verse 13. And do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves <clears throat> to God as those alive from the dead. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall no longer be masters over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? May it never be. Verse 15 uh, stands out because there's a worldview nowadays, and, and a lot of Christians have it, that says when we receive Christ as Lord and Savior, that we are free, and we are. We have the freedom to do whatever. They take that as we have the freedom to sin, to continue to sin. I can sin because I'll be forgiven. I know it. God knows my heart. I don't want to grow. That's not what we need to do. That's not how we need to conduct ourselves. Just because we can doesn't mean we should. Uh, when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of us, He begins that work. And if we continue to harden our hearts, He cannot work because we are not allowing Him to. And God wants us to surrender. That's why, that's why it says trust in the Lord. It doesn't say trust in, in our prayer. It doesn't say trust in our thinking, it says, trust in the Lord. Allow Him to work. Uh, verse 16, do, do you not know that when you present yourselves to someone as slaves for obedience, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of resulting in, uh, either of sin resulting in death, or of obedience resulting in righteousness? But thanks be to God that you were slaves to, of sin, that though you were slaves of sin, you became obedient from, from the heart, that to that form of teaching to which you were committed. And having been freed from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves to impurity, to lawlessness, resulting in further lawlessness, 
So now, present your members as slaves to righteousness, resulting in sanctification. Sanctification being set apart. God has called us out to himself to be holy and to be righteous for him, to be an example to the unbelievers. Uh, I heard one time that uh, we need to be so for God that it's ugly to people, that we are ugly to people. And that is one of my desires, not, not necessarily to be ugly, but uh, to be a shining light for this lost and dark world. Uh, verse 2, back in chapter 12, says, And do not be conformed to this world. We can't allow the world to tell us how to live. Uh, we have, uh, the, the world has said to us that homosexuality, homosexuality is okay. Uh, they've said that spanking is not okay. They've said that we need to be wealthy. We need to have this, this massive amount of stuff in order to be successful, in order to live uh, the perfect life. Well, what does God say about that? 